Hey, what's up? This is Chosen. Happy Monday to you. It is Monday morning and time to get our Raid Shadow Legends week kicked off. Now we have got CBC, as you can see on screen, launching tomorrow. We've got a couple crazy 10x events that are in association with that CBC, but I want you to be careful because of how the shard rotation is going, but we'll talk about that. And then we've also got the Savage event live for the Fire Knight, but again, I want you to be careful because of CBC launching really soon. But what we're going to do is get the week kicked off and talk about everything you need to know to set up your week to play Raid Shadow Legends efficiently. Let's get into it. Alrighty, now uh, as always with CBC, we are going to be having two different champions featured in 10x events for those that want to double dip and get some points for pulling shards during CBC. And the first champion that's going to be featured on the on day one of CBC is going to be Krisk, and then on day two, we've got a new champion in Korrigar. Which means on Tuesday, day one, there's going to be a 10x boosted chance for Krisk. And just to give you the rundown of these two champions, um, obviously I don't need to introduce Krisk very much. He is widely known, widely regarded as one of the best PvE champions in the game. And he is a champion that every single person wants on their account. An absolute monster versus the Hydra boss and all of that. So clearly uh, he is one of the best champions in the game to feature in a 10x because anybody who doesn't have him is going to be excited excited to summon Krisk, that's for sure. But for the champion on day two, Korrigar Deathbell, that is going to be a brand new champion of the game that some of you may not be as familiar with. So we'll break it down a little bit more in depth than we did for Chris. So Korrigar is a new champion in the Ogren Tribes that is going to be an HP scaling champion, an A1 that heals himself by 10% of max HP. And then an A2 that's going to be an AOE. You can fill, uh, book this up to a 100% chance of filling the turn meter of all allies by 30% and also a chance to remove all debuffs from all allies that can also be booked up to 100%. So a really cool A2 there to do some support and damage and turn meter fill all in one ability on a three turn cooldown when booked up. So pretty solid. And then the A3 is going to be an ally protection uh, on all allies except for this champion obviously while also placing a strengthen on all allies and this is a three turn cooldown. So Korrigar has a nice rotation of the default 3-3 three, three for cooldowns when booked and also has a passive of increase the champion's resistance by 20 and defense by 10% for each ally protection buff on allies. Also increases ally resistance by 15 and defense by 5% for each ally protection. So basically, we're just getting buffs for himself and the whole team based on placing that ally protection. And then if there are multiple champions on the team with the skill, uh, it's got the caveat of it's only going to work for him. And then also has a good source of sustain there at the bottom of the passive where counterattacks whenever an ally under ally protection is attacked, which again, that counterattack is going to be the default ability that is going to heal himself by 10% of max HP. So it's not based off of critting or do any damage or anything like that, but you would probably still want crit rate on this guy just for the A2. Now, people are always curious about the multipliers, and basically what you need to know is this guy is going to be comparable to Sir Nicholas. He's not going to be the best nuker in the game, but he can do decent damage as far as an HP scaling champion. Because his multiplier here on the A2 is a 0.24, and then for Sir Nick, his AoE nuke is a 0.25. So uh, he will be slightly worse in terms of damage capability than Sir Nick, because also his HP is slightly lower. I believe Sir Nick is just over 22k, and Korrigar is 21 and a half about. Let's check it out just to be sure here. So let's go under Sir Nick. And I believe he's, uh, yep, okay, oh, almost, almost 23k, actually. So, yeah, Sir Nick will be a, maybe a slightly higher ceiling for AoE nuking, but Korrigar can do a decent job here uh, on the A2 and be a decent damage utility dealer as an HP scaling champion. Oh, geez, and during the video, we are getting a flash offer, so I have to go over this right away because they disappear when you close them. Um, I can tell right out the gate that this is not going to be a good offer for $30. Uh, this would need to drop down to 20 for me to even want to plug it in and consider it. Uh, so yeah, if you see this lightning offer with the silver and chicken and, and two books, just isn't enough and 10 energy refills. Um, yeah, so it, it, it will have more value for a mobile user because it's got the 200 multi battles, but it's not enough to justify the $30 in my opinion and, and kind of plug it in and, and get hype about it. But anyway, I was trying to get back to the shard rotation and talk about this in relation to CVC and the different 10 X's going on, obviously. Uh, 
a 10x for Crisk is pretty hype, and you're going to see some people in the community that want to pull for the Crisk. I, I think Korrigar is interesting and fun. I don't think he's worth yoloing shards uh, outside of a 2x event for. Uh, you know, for it to be someone like that, you'd have to, you know, Duchess, Kaimar, and, and champions that are up in that top 10 of non-voids. But uh, but obviously Crisk is amazing. I do want you to be careful though because uh, void shards are going to be next in the 2x rotation. It goes in alphabetical order: Ancient, Sacred, Void, and obviously we just had 2x Sacreds. So we are going to be having void shards somewhat soon in a 2x event. So just keep that in your mind and be careful. Also for the guaranteed summon events, uh, let me let me fix that. It's cutting off the bottom. Okay, there we go. Uh, so, you know, I don't think we're going to be getting a third void event in a row. Uh, we, we've had three out of the last five be void so, uh, void shards with White Dryad and then Aileel and then Actum Tomb. So I bet you we're going to be getting Ancients for the next one or two. So in terms of guaranteed voids, uh, probably not coming up anytime soon here, but it does take a while to save up voids. So whether or not you should be YOLOing during CVC for a 10x Crisk would depend completely on your account, your spending tier, and where you stand on Mercy and all of that. But for most of you, it's probably not going to be optimal. You'll probably want to wait because we do have the 2x event coming up soon here for Void Shards. So just keep all of that in mind. But remember, uh, you can also get a good source of fragments by claiming champions in your fragment tab. I've been saving up Pytheon because claiming him and booking him is going to be 60,000 points to start off my CVC. So I've been trying to be disciplined and hold off I've, I've wanted to build him and do a video and all of that uh, on my account but we're trying to uh, uh you know play optimally and and wait for cbc and so when this goes live i will claim him book him and get to work on all of that and just keep that uh, option open to you for cbc as well for the in-game tournaments and events, uh, the most important thing going on right now is going to be the Fire Knight tournament that revolves around the massive boost, the 3x for Savage Gear. So I do think it is a good opportunity to grind uh, Savage Gear, but you want to be careful because this this will double dip a little bit with CVC. So if you've got like 2,000 energy in your in your inbox and you're waiting to claim it, uh, you are going to want to hold off and do that tomorrow and then slam it into the Fire Knight so that you can get some points for CVC and also grind the Fire Knight tournament and some of that Savage gear uh, all in one by being disciplined enough to wait till tomorrow. And there isn't really anything super noteworthy in the events. We've got Galex Path, uh, but you know it's kind of the same drill. Nothing, uh, nothing super noteworthy here uh, to get uh, crazy about, like a, like a legendary version of Galex to go earn or something. So uh, all of this is, is kind of is what it is for the time being. So now let's see if there's anything worth going over in the shop. Uh, this is too expensive for these coins, in my opinion. Um, the Galec Power Pack. Okay, so let's go ahead and walk through an optimal path of this and see if it's worth the $20 price tag. So what is better between 20 energy refills? 20 is going to be 977. And then 2800 energy. Is, okay, so let's go with that. It's slightly better, I think, uh, to go with the 2800 energy. So we'll start there. And uh, what is this? Oh, what? You can do the same thing twice? Or wait. Interesting. Oh, you just do the exact same thing twice. Okay. Um, and then on this. So, I know most of you uh, tell me in the comment sections that you're stacked up on XP banners. But 500k silver. I mean, six days of XP is way better than 500k silver. Um, and energy refills. And um, 500 multi-battles is decent. Which one comes out as better? So, let's clear this. Uh, let's go 500 multi battles. Is okay, and then what about the two XP banners? So it'd be six days. Uh, 450. Okay, so pretty close. I, uh, you know, if you're massively stacked up, I would just take the multi battles, especially if you're a mobile player. Uh, if you're not a mobile player, uh, if you've got access to RSL Helper, Blue Stacks, and stuff like that, I would probably go with the days of XP, but it is mostly a wash there. But let's go ahead and plug it in. So we've got the six days of XP, and then 2800 times two is 5600 energy. Put in the price of 20. And we get a good. Okay, so uh, that's actually honestly a pretty solid score for a purchase limit of three offer because it grades out as a 1.28. So that means anybody that is in the medium to high spending tier, this offer would be worth considering uh, because it grades out above average there at a 1.28. 
But for people that are uh, down towards the lower spending tiers, you're usually looking for offers that are at least like a 1.5 to 2. So probably a not recommend for that kind of a spender. Uh, the, the, it's way better than this great deal mix pack. Uh, and then we've got, ooh, the sack of gems. Okay, let's plug this one in. So let's put in the price of 20 and then the gems here of 3,000. Okay. Now this one is a 1.83, so it does grade out uh, as better value than the Galex Power Pack. So if you're asking my opinion for most of you out there, if you're considering buying one of these packs or you're willing to buy one but not both, I would probably go with the Sack of Gems, the 3K, just general utility for the 20 because it does grade out pretty significantly better, at least on the calculator algorithm. Oh my goodness, and as we backed out of the shop, the day is upon us. We have got the 101% extra mini mix packs. Here we go. These packs are pretty hype. For those of you that don't remember, let's go ahead and plug this in really quick. These are some of the better offers you're going to see in-game. So let's put in the price there, and then we've got a lot to plug in. So let's go 60, 1, 2, 3 for the K, and then we've got the XP brews uh, right here of 10, the two arena refills, bang, and then the two energy refills boom um the demon lord keys they're technically 200 gems but some of you wouldn't want to plug that in so let's go ahead and delete it some of you aren't aren't worried about purchasing the keys and don't get anything for it uh the two four star chicken right there and then the two ancient shards boom so you can see even without putting in the keys this comes out at a 1.98 close to that 2.0 excellent tier now for me personally i'm a pretty diligent spender i usually start to look at, at buying an offer once it's around like that 1.8 to 2.0 tier just for me personally so this is one to consider if you're a spender on raid in any capacity, the packs that are around a 2.0 uh, score are going to be the ones that you're looking for. So watch out for those 101% extra mini mix packs. As you can see, I just got one on my account and it's going to be the best offer that you see in the shop probably today. And some other random stuff that you want to make sure you're paying attention to. You have got your daily quests. They're going to be resetting today. Uh, so make sure and pop into your clan quest tab and focus on those for a little bit to make sure you're getting those done. And then make sure you've got your tag team arena in order uh, because that can be a big source of points for CBC for those of you that have a strong enough account to participate in uh, in the uh, in the tag team arena for CBC and all of that. And remember to hold off on your drop fever in the fire night until tomorrow so that we can double dip our energy and be as efficient as possible for CBC. So there we go. Would mean a lot to the channel if you subscribe and like the video on your way out as it does help out a lot and I appreciate you. Uh, I'm going to head on over to the live section and hang out for a little bit to get the week kicked off here and get our accounts in order. Lots of exciting content coming up this week. I really want to get my Python built tomorrow and, and start uh, kind of seeing how the build comes out and where I'm going to use him and do a, a more dedicated deep dive into him here with my main account and all sorts of stuff like that. So I will see you over on the live tab if you want to pop in and say hi. But otherwise, I'll see you soon in the next video. Thanks for watching. Appreciate you. Have a great start to your week. I'll see you soon. Peace.